Welcome to Countouts. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the loan amortization schedule. We're going to do this using Excel. Now, we have done two other lessons relating to the loan amortization schedule. In the first one, we just showed how to prepare a simple loan amortization schedule using Excel. So that was a very simplified example. So if you do not know how to prepare a loan amortization schedule, I would strongly encourage you to check that one out before looking at this one here because that one was quite simple. And in the second one, we looked at how to do a loan amortization schedule. But in that scenario, we had extra payments being made toward the loan over and above the monthly required payments. So if someone is making extra payment toward the loan, how does that feature into our loan amortization schedule using Excel? And we showed that in our second lesson. Now, what is happening in this lesson? Well, in this one here, we're looking at the same loan amortization schedule, but in this case, you have a scenario where the interest rate keeps changing. So if you have interest rates changing time and time again while you're paying off your loan, what will happen to your loan amortization schedule? That's exactly what we are looking at here. And that is why I said, if you do not know how to do a loan amortization schedule, check out our first lesson first before checking this one out. Otherwise, all the lessons relating to loan amortization schedule that we've done, you'll find them in the links in the description below. So here's the scenario that we have. You have a loan of 900,000 rand that you've taken out to the bank. And at the time of taking out that loan, you were charged an interest rate of 9.5%. But obviously in this case, we're going to have that interest rate changing. And that is actually a real life situation, especially what happened during COVID and after COVID. Remember during COVID and just after the COVID period, you had interest rates falling drastically. And that was good for the consumer because that means that you're paying less and less, especially if your interest rate was valid variable, meaning it's changing. But what happened is that the further we moved away from COVID, the interest rates kept rising and rising. And that means that you'd have to have more money set aside to pay off your loan on a monthly basis. And that's what we're going to show here. What happens when the interest rate changes? And also, how do you do it in your loan amortization schedule when you have a variable interest rate or a changing interest rate? Well, let's look at it. So 9.5% is your initial interest, but we're going to have that changing. And then the payment we will have to calculate the initial payment based on the rate of 9.5 percent and the initial payment date is 1st of january 2022 so we just use that as an example and you're paying off this loan over a period of 20 years now what i like to do is to show over how many months am i going to pay off this loan well if it's 20 years i'm going to take the 20 multiplied by 12 and that will give me 240 months that means i need to pay off this loan over 240 months obviously if you looked at our second lesson where you're making extra payments you will decrease the number of months you will have to pay off your loan but here we are focusing on the changing interest rate all right now that we have all our details let's begin now that we know that our payment period is 240 that's the first thing we're going to do we're going to put down 240 periods down here so we're going to have from 1 to 240 but what i like to do if you check out our other lessons is that i like to start with zero okay because zero is the point at which you are taking out the loan and then we go to one okay now that i have that we're going to drag this down until we get to 240 and that's the first thing you always do when you have your payment period that's what you want to do for your period so let's go down okay i've just dragged it down and it's just showing one so if yours is doing the same you can see here what appears is the plus sign so if you click on that then you click on fill series it's going to fill the numbers in for you in sequence and then you can see we have 200 and 40 that's exactly what we want so let's go back up so the next thing we need to do is put in our payment our interest our capital and balance but what you notice is that we don't have interest now if you have a variable interest rate or an interest that is changing time and time again what you want to do is to create a column for your interest rate because we're going to have interest rate for each particular period right 240 periods so that whenever we have the interest rate changing we're just going to change the interest rate at that particular point and you'll see how we do that just now so let's create a column for the interest rate so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to move all these columns to my right and create one more column for the interest rate and i'm going to put here rate all right once i've done that i can put in my interest rate obviously my beginning interest rate is the 9.5 percent that the bank has given me so i'm just going to put that down here and you can see it's showing it as a currency so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to click on the percentage sign up here 
right now it's showing the interest rate so and then make sure it shows the decimals as well and then once i've put in my percentage i just need to go to the bottom right of the cell and double click for it to flash fill all the way to period 240 so if you go down to period 240 you can see it's the 9.5 percent so let's go back up and now that we have our rate we can easily change any of these rates here so let's say our rate changes from 9.5 to 10.5 for instance that will make our payment adjust our interest as well as our capital which fits into the balance that we will owe for that respective period and that is why we want a rate for each specific period because it's variable unlike the first lesson we had done where it was fixed throughout the life of the loan so now let's do our payment remember at period zero meaning on the 1st of january 2022 in this case we took out the loan and that means we are not making any payments at that specific date we're only going to make the payment at the end of the month meaning the 31st of january 2022 and that is why we don't start with year zero in putting our payment we start with period one i have not put in my balance as yet so let me put in my balance of 900 000 rand press enter now here's where you'll notice a difference between how we did the formula for the payment in the first and the second lesson where we had a fixed interest rate and how we are going to do it here we have to take into account our interest rate for that particular period and how many months are left or how many periods are left until the term of the loan is finished and here is what i mean we're going to press equals and then we press the negative sign because we want our payment to come out as a positive if I don't put minus, the PMT formula will come out as a negative because obviously it's payments that you're making. So it is a negative, but I'm going to press equals and then minus. You don't have to press equals. You could just press minus and then you press PMT. And this is where we're going to put in our amounts. And then what I need to put is the rate for this particular period. Remember, I'm not selecting the interest rate at the top here because we're no longer dealing with a fixed interest rate as with the previous examples we looked at. We are dealing with a variable interest rate. So this rate is going to change at any point in time. So I want to select the rate for this particular period. We're in period one. So the rate at this particular period is this one here at the cell at period one. All right. So you want to make sure you do that. And then what you don't want to forget is to divide it by 12. Because remember, the rate you're given here is an annual interest rate. Unless you do what we did last time where you take the 9.5% and divide it by 12 and you put the monthly interest rate here. But in this case, since we're not dealing with a fixed interest rate, we're dealing with a variable interest rate. We're taking the interest rate for that particular period and dividing it by 12. So that when we change the interest rate for any of the periods that are to come, then the formula is going to divide it by 12 automatically. All right. I hope that one was easy enough. And then we press the comma sign and then the number of period. Now, this number of periods, obviously, if we're dealing with a fixed interest rate, we we'll just select the 240 periods and then we we'll lock it and then we we'll just drag it down. But in this case, since we are dealing with the variable interest rate, we want to know at each month how many periods are left, meaning at each specific month. How many payments do I still need to make for me to clear off the loan? Obviously, right now we're at period one. How many months are left or how many payment periods are left? It's 240 because we haven't made the first payment yet. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to select the payment period 240 and we're going to lock it. So you press F4. Otherwise, with your computer or laptop, you might have to press the FN key and then F4. And then once you've done that, just lock both the row and the column because you don't want it to move once you drag down. And then what you do is that you deduct the period that has just preceded this particular period that we're in, right? Which is period zero. And then you press comma. I hope that one made sense. What we needed to do is to put the 240 periods and then we deduct the previous period, which is period zero in this case. Why are we doing that? Because we want to know how many periods are left until we finish paying off this loan. That will matter because when the interest rate changes, it looks at at what period am I in and how many periods are left before I finish paying off this loan and what the, what is the balance at that particular period. So let's say we're in period 10, for instance. We know that nine periods have passed right so if it's 240 minus nine periods that means we have 231 payments to make so we want our formula to take that into account because our interest rate is not fixed and then what is our present value well that's quite easy that's the value at the end of the previous period which is the balance right that's what we did in our other lessons as well so that's quite easy so we put the balance at the end of the previous period and we don't lock the cell because what we want is that when we drag it down we want it to capture the new balance all right at that particular point and then we press the comma 
what is our future value well this is a mortgage loan so we don't have a future value unless you're dealing with a car payment where you have a balloon payment at the end of the term then you put in your balloon payment as the future value but in this case we don't so put in zero and then we press the comma we have here the options for end of period or beginning of the period well we pay off this mortgage loan at the end of the period we took out the loan at the, on the 1st of january 2022 and we're going to make payments at the end of each month so that's zero okay and then i close my brackets over there if you're making the payments at the beginning of the period by the way you just select one for that last part now that you put in the necessary information let's press enter and that is the monthly payment that you need to make on an interest rate of 9.5%, 8,389 rand. Obviously, this includes both interest and capital. So let's go to the interest part. That's quite easy to do. We take the interest for this particular period. Remember, we're not taking the interest rate at the top here and locking the cell as we did in the previous examples because this is a variable interest rate. So putting in the interest for this particular period, we're not locking the cell and then we divide it by 12. Always remember to divide your interest by 12 unless you're given the monthly interest, then you don't need to divide. Okay. And then once you've divided, it, you multiply by the balance of the previous period and it gives us what is allocated to interest all right and then what is allocated to capital well that's easy that's the payment minus the interest and that is how much is allocated to capital and then obviously what is the balance at the end of period one well that's the balance of the previous period minus the capital of period one and you press enter and that is how much is left over now that we've put in all the information that we needed to do all we need to do is just select everything here and just drag them all the way down and we want to make sure that by the end of it we have paid off the loan if we have not then we've made a mistake somewhere so let's go all the way to the bottom here we are you can see by the end of the 240th month we have paid off the loan okay and that's what you want that means we've done everything correctly so let's go back up and see what now happens when the interest rate changes so let's say we're paying 9.5 percent for the next uh, let's say three years right 36 months uh, in 36 months you paid the interest rate at 9.5 percent but let's say the interest rate suddenly changes from 9.5 percent to 10 percent what's going to happen to your payment all right so let's change the 37th month to 10 percent and press enter and then obviously we need to make sure that we drag it all the way down so let's say you're paying 10 percent and we're dragging it all the way down you can see that the payment that you need to make on a monthly basis has changed so let's go up i want to freeze our headings here so that you can see properly view and then freeze panes Okay, let's go down here to the 36th month or 37th month where we change to 10%. You can see we're paying 8,389 Rand. Now we're paying 8,655 Rand. Why is that? That's because of the change in the interest rate. That is why you do it this way when you're dealing with a variable interest rate where it can change at any point in time. So let me show you here at the end what it shows. So let's scroll all the way down to the end. You can see we have still paid off our mortgage loan by the end of the 240 months and that is how mortgage loans work when you have a variable interest rate and how you prepare loan amortization schedule when you have a variable interest rate so let's assume here let's do one more let's assume here at 160 months the interest rate now goes down from 10 percent all the way to 8.5 percent so let's put 8.5 percent and press enter and then obviously we make sure we drag all the way to the bottom and you can see here it has moved from 8655 to 8200 rand all right that is the payment so we go down here and you can see by the end of 240 months you still have paid off your mortgage loan and that is how you prepare the loan amortization schedule using excel when you have a variable interest rate or an interest rate which changes so if you are asked to prepare loan amortization schedule or if you are asked what is the payment or the interest going to be at this particular period when the interest rate changes then you can just tweak the rate around and you will see what answer it gives you i hope that has made sense i hope you gained value from this lesson and if you did consider subscribing to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help Please also consider joining our membership and supporting the work that we do. You'll also get access to all the documents that we've used in all our YouTube lessons, including the document that we used for this particular lesson. Till next time. Cheers.